You're listening to the Situation Today podcast with Golf Business. If you'd like to learn more about the latest business stories in the GCC region, please visit www.golfbusiness.com. On the Situation Today podcast, we've got Dr. Rula Sharkey, an MIT-trained assistant professor currently at Harriet Watt Dubai. She is passionate about research that contributes to the quality of our lives on a daily basis, and she's talking to Gulf Business. Let's hear from her. So, Dr. Rula, thank you so much for joining Gulf Business uh, on this podcast. And I would also like to say happy International Women in Engineering Day. It was marked on June 23rd. And the theme this year was enhanced by engineering and it celebrates the work of women engineers around the world and the amazing work they do to support lives and livelihoods every day. Uh, you're talking to us about being a female engineer in the industry and all that has meant for you in your professional and personal journey. So thank you once again. Thank you for having us. Thank you for this opportunity. I really appreciate it. Just to begin, I'd really like to understand what inspired you to take up the engineering profession and what is your favorite type of engineering solution? Well, uh, to start with, I was inspired by my parents, especially my mother. She was one of the first engineers in Arab world. She graduated in the 1970s. And I'm so proud of her. She inspired me to pursue a career in engineering. And I hope that from my uh, work, I can inspire uh, the young girls to um, find their opportunity and to uh, be an engineer. Okay. And following up on my question, what is your favorite field in engineering? Well, this is a, a bit hard question. All engineering uh, parts are uh, useful and, and, and important, but being as an uh, electronics engineer give, gave me the opportunity to witness the fast and exponential growth of technology uh, in, in the field. So maybe I would say electronics, it's a growing and fast growing field, and it's, it's very interesting. And it has an, a huge impact on our daily life. Absolutely. And what challenges do women face in the engineering profession or academia? You know, you've given your example of your own mother who did it decades ago. You obviously know of challenges she faced then. And how does that change for you? Was it different? Was it same? Have things improved? Could you give us an insight into that? It's improving daily. There is a daily improvement uh, regarding the concept and the stereotype of uh, a woman in engineering. Um, there is a, a misconception that women aren't as capable in technologies, in the technological field like um, uh, men, which is the reality. This is definitely not a true. This is entirely false. Women have the same capability, the same brain for technical skills, mathematical skills, problem solving ability as men, exactly. So engineering ability is not determined by gender, but by education, uh, experience, and uh, determination. Absolutely. And so how can society empower women and girls who are currently studying and are deciding on their future careers and career paths that they will take to choose engineering? And do you know anything about what UAE is doing to support aspiring female engineers? Uh, yes, of course. Engineering has historically been a male-dominated field, but uh, as you mentioned, in the Middle East, and especially in UAE. Um, in the recent year, there has been a um, notable raise in the number of women in engineering. According to the UNESCO, 34 to 57% of the STEM graduates in, in Arab countries are women, uh, while the figure in the UK or in the USA were 16%, 14%, um, uh, no more than that. So in the Middle, the Middle East efforts to empower women in engineering are uh, making significant pro uh, uh, progress because of the educational opportunity uh, has uh, have expanded. Lots of universities uh, established, allowing more women to pursue engineering uh, degree 
and um, participating activity in STEM field. Thank you for giving us that insight. And so what what is the biggest misconception that people have about your job when you tell them that, you know, you're an engineer and you're working to develop solutions for everyday problems? The, the biggest misconceptions like the women aren't capable in, in this field, which is totally false. We have the same brain and we are 100% capable uh, with if if they have the passion, I don't want to force all the girls to be an engineer. But uh, if the the girl have a, a passion about math and physics, definitely engineers is the right place for it. And we can see every day lots of inventions um, uh, came from a uh, females in engineering and, and the women in engineering. Why, according to you, is it more or maybe extremely important? to have advancements in in the field of engineering done by women? What do they add or what do they bring to the table? Diversity. We need to empower women and girls uh, to enhance the diversity in engineering system. Um, in the UAE, an increasing number of women are pursuing career in engineering and technology, which is something I'm personally proud of. Uh, driven by initiatives aimed to promote gender diversity in the STEM field in general. Uh, women continued a uh, significant uh, uh, potential of STEM graduates and engineering under, in, in the undergraduates and even postgraduate field. And that will reflect uh, robust support through the government to uh, the young girls. We know that there is uh, something of considerable interest to young mothers and uh, mothers-to-be uh, about a solution that you have come up with. Uh, could you tell us more about it? Because it stems from your personal life, but you've used your professional experience and your uh, educational background to come up with this solution. Yes, it's called Little Guard. I, I like to call it Little Guard. Uh, Little Guard came, as you mentioned, from personal experience. Uh, I was uh, taking care of my uh, son. He was two years old and he was suffering from flu. Uh, the seasonal flu, nothing special. I believe all kids will catch it one, one day. Uh, and because of the flu, his body temperature increased. And I had to monitor his body temperature through the night. It was um really exhausting uh, experience and unfortunately all mothers have to pass it through that experience uh, at certain time so checking the body temperature frequently and that will prevent me from a good night to sleep and the next day i have a, a work to do so i found there is a problem engineering or engineers in general we designed to find the solutions. So since we have a problem, um, I work on a design uh, of a smart wristband for babies. Lots of uh, nano-electronic sensors embedded in the fabric so the baby can wear it easily and safely without... Uh, it, it's a very comfortable material um, and it will keep monitor the body temperature of the baby uh, and give uh, give readings uh, to the parents in case the body temperature uh, exceed the safe limits the device able to send an alarm to the parents asking for help quite interesting and uh, where is it in the production stage could you give us more details about it and is there any patent technology that is involved in yeah. it we'd really like to know more yes of course uh, we are at Heriot-Watt University. We are responsible of creating the innovation, the idea, the design, the prototype. Uh, these steps have been uh, completed successfully. Um, we have the prototype and the, the result is um, very promising. And now we are working uh, to find an industrial partner who can bring that uh, innovation to the market. Excellent. And you mentioned that, you know, you've uh, done this work at Harriet Ward Dubai. So what role does academia play in closing the gender gap in the STEM fields? Uh, offering uh, role models to young female students 
uh, and support, uh, let them feel that they belong and we can hear them and support them, that will definitely enhance in uh, closing the gender gap. And my last question is, do you have a message to all young girls or all women uh, engineers who are working in the STEM fields? Yes, of course. I can tell them, be brave, follow your passion. Uh, nothing is impossible. Everything is possible. You can do it. Wow. This has been a really inspiring conversation, Dr. Rula. Thank you so much for talking to Gulf Business. Thank you so much, uh, Marisha. Nice to talk to you. Thank you for this interview. You're listening to the Situation Today podcast with Gulf Business. If you'd like to learn more about the latest business stories in the GCC region, please visit www.gulfbusiness.com.